You've never seen someone with green hair before. Well, I have green hair because I'm Green Power Girl, sent from Mother Nature on a very important mission to sustain life on this planet for all children of all creatures for all time. Now, I go into schools and I talk to kids about energy, where it comes from, why it's important to conserve it, and how to think about it differently. But I have to say, usually I talk to thousands of elementary school kids, and it makes me a little nervous when I have to talk to adults. So my friends have been telling me, well, just imagine all of them in their underwear, right? You've heard that before, but that doesn't quite work for me. So I'm going to imagine you all in your superhero capes and outfits. Because really, my job is to inspire the greatness that's inside of us. So I know there's a lot of greatness in this room because we've heard some, from some of you already. But if you don't know what your superhero power is, let me know afterwards, OK? Because I really want to know. So as I said, I've, um, I go into schools and I talk to kids about energy and about climate change. I've done over 1,500 presentations um, in schools in all kinds of neighborhoods. Um, the program has been in three states. I've been doing this for the last 12 years, and it's my green hair that instantly connects me, right? Because I can go into any school in any neighborhood, and it's green that's the common denominator. I can bypass cultural and ethnic differences, political ideologies, because it's nature on which we all depend. I especially love working with girls because I know, as research has shown, that when we empower girls, especially in the sciences, they bring that information home, and we empower communities, and we empower the world. Oh. But mostly, I want kids, all kids, to know that it's the power of their hero's heart. It's whatever makes them special that the world needs from them. And we also know that we will protect what we love. So inspiring that love of nature, that wonder and awe and brilliance that is all around us is part of my job as well. Um, let me go back for a second. Um, so I started this uh, 12 years ago in the year 2000. I got a contract with the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power to teach kids about energy conservation. And at that time, Los Angeles was suffering blackouts and brownouts, and they knew that kids were the best avenue to get this information home. So I started, and it was at that time that also the IP, IPCC, the International Panel of Climate Change, released their first report. Now, this is th thousands of scientists from all around the world came together and agreed that, yes, indeed, all this burning of fossil fuels is adding heat-trapping gases into the Earth's blanket, our atmosphere, and it's causing the planet to warm and our climate to change. Um, and we've seen since that time the results of, of what the scientists had um, talked about 12 years ago. They're still saying the same thing, even though you might think that there's dissension in the scientific community. It's only a few of the, the, the scientists, and we really have to follow the money of where they're getting their funding to really look at that. But the vast majority of scientists agree on this. So we've seen the results of a warming planet, including stronger and more intense storms. This is Hurricane Katrina. Floods, intense flooding, droughts. Our fossil fuel addiction is, you know, taking off tops of mountains. Nuclear meltdowns, oil spills, polar, um, uh, glacier melting and species extinction. They say that um, we will lose 30 to 40 percent of the Earth's most amazing creatures due to climate change because polar bears can't just take off their fur coats, right, and move to Hawaii. And ocean animals can't adjust rapidly to the changing chemistry and the fact that all of this carbon dioxide is now being sucked up into our ocean, right? They can't adjust like we can. So we're going to see rapid extinction unless we turn our energy ways around. So there I stood with my first assembly, and I put together what I thought was a very compelling slideshow, much of like what you saw there, and I um, proceeded to bore and scare them to death. And, you know, it is scary. If we are paying attention to the science that's coming out, they're giving us a very short window to turn our energy ways around. And yet, everywhere I see 
earth heroes. I see heroes like you in this room, grassroots organizations that are doing what they can. And so that's the information that I want to inspire um, these future green power heroes with. But at that time, 12 years ago, I felt really powerless. It's like, what can I do? to teach kids about energy? What can I do to confront the biggest and most powerful forces on the planet? I'm just a girl. But we need heroes because what is a hero anyway but someone who, who overcomes or rises above our fears and limitations to achieve something extraordinary. A hero embodies what is best in ourselves. And so Green Power Girl was born and with my renewable energy cape and my solar scepter with my brand new um, LED light bulb um, and heart of compassion there, we are ready for the challenge. And now kids get really excited when I come into their school. Um, they love Green Power Girl and they know that there is an intense opportunity for them to face this challenge. They've got a huge job transitioning this world off of fossil fuels. So we need to empower that part of them that is special and super. But fear not, I'm not the only hero in the universe. We've got Marina Del Rey, and she's got a magic shell phone. And any ocean creature can call her at any time and say, hey, Marina, we need more green power. If the oceans warm just three degrees, we lose our coral reefs. Can you imagine Hawaii without our precious coral reefs? Mercury man, born from the toxic mercury from coal-fired power plants, hastily discarded mercury thermometers and CFL light bulbs. But Mother Nature saw this toxic brew forming and decided she would turn him into a mutant healer. And now he goes around the planet and he gauges the Earth's rapidly changing climate and temperature. And he can suck all that toxic mercury into his system and make something better. Joe Wind Power comes in a flash with clean green power. He's got turbine power, dreadlocks, and a magic drum. He is sort of um, like an elemental. Like he creates storms and wind diversions to scare off the fossil fools. He's. Um, He's a pretty magical, magical character. And I created a, a cartoon. I couldn't play the clip for you today, but you can go on Green Power Girl and watch the whole cartoon that the kids see. And I've um, created a, uni a, a card game with a whole universe of Green Power heroes, energies, animal avatars, the fossil fools, so that we can interact or kids can interact with this information in a different way. We play. Um, and what I know, and Einstein said it best, that logic will get you from A to B, but imagination, it will take you everywhere. And don't we need to allow the space for our kids to be greater and better than all of us? Can we provide them a space to dream their future into being with all of their great ideas? I mean, and they come up with some good ones. Um, so every year I ask the kids to come up with the next Green Power Hero. And it's pretty amazing what they come up with. This is a second grader who got so sad when he heard that polar bears might go extinct in his lifetime that his character, Refreeze, has a magic refreezing gun. And I couldn't quite fit the polar bear over there, but he's saying, thank you, Refreeze. And there's Green Power Girl up there to help him out. So this is a second grade class, and they had amazing characters. I mean, this is complex information that they're allowed, that they're able to, you know, process in a different way. And who knows, he might create a refreezing gun one day. Why not? Um, this is my friend Amber, and she learned that we were making um, clean green fuel out of algae. We're testing it right here on the Big Island. She got so excited that she decided she would become Algae Girl and spread the, in the uh, inspiration. Recycle Man Makana started a recycling program at his school because right now it's illegal for schools to recycle. Can you believe it? Hello! But Recycle Man Makana managed to get his school to start a program like that. And it's not just kids that like to dress up as my heroes. 
This is um, Back to the Green. She's a plant whisperer. She's inspired by many of you in this room, and she asks us to listen to the sound and voice of nature because it's brilliant. And if we had ears that could hear plants, what would that sound like? What would they say? Even the fossil fools show up. So this is the head of Earth Acquisition Inc. This is Mr. Mogu. Um, sometimes his briefcase says oil or GMO, depending on his um, feeling for the day. And his um, evil sidekick, Crimson Tide. And she likes to, you know, spread red, red algae blooms in the ocean. So those are the fossil fools. There's also Status Quo and Fred Fossil and a bunch of them. You're supposed to say boo. boo. Yeah. Good. And these are the two, uh, two fairly new members of the Green Power Hero universe. This is Blue Revolution Man and the Green Flash. Green Flash is here incognito today. I won't give away his secret identity. But these are green leaders in our communities who have found this platform engaging, an engaging way to, um, to talk about things that we love and care about. And we get invited to environmental fairs and parades, and um, we're, we're very popular. So here's what I know as Green Power Girl, is that everybody has a superhero inside of them. And so you probably, many of you know here in this room what your superpower is. But what is it? And how do we share it with the world and with kids in a bigger way? What is your joyful service, your specialness? that the world needs. And you all know that you don't have to have green hair or a renewable energy cape or even a solar scepter, but you just have to have a hero's heart because that is what the world needs. We will protect what we love.